Hey y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. My name is Dominic Insinius. I'm the leader of this church community, and I'm so grateful that you have taken some time out of your day in your journey of faith to be a part of what God is doing here in the city of San Marcos. We have a saying around here, you don't have to go to church here to go to church here, and that means you are welcome to enjoy this message from your tablet, phone, or computer, wherever you're watching it on. Big things can happen when we expect God to move, so I pray today that God would speak to you through this message, the message today can encourage you and empower you to move throughout your week and what's next in your life. So enjoy this message. continuing our message series today and our message series is called heart flicks movie night and we called it movie night even though we're telling you to watch a tv show and that's just how life goes sometimes so deal with it okay the show we have been inviting you guys to watch is called Mas has anybody been able to watch it watch some of it part of it a little bit of it okay uh if you haven't yet i really want to encourage you to check it out it is a uh, very interesting show that gives a perspective of what life would be like or, or uh, what, how the world would react and interact with a Messiah-type person coming into the world now. And so we, as, you, as you go along with the show, you follow uh, this CIA agent. Her name is Eva, and she is trying to track down this person because it looks like he's trying to stir up some trouble, and there's already some, some drama in the Middle East. Drama is putting it very lightly. I'm very underselling what's going on there. There's a lot of unrest, and, and, and he's right in the middle of that. It starts to affect the country, and it starts to affect the world. And he has these interactions with people, and if you if you haven't watched uh, the series, you know, if, and you ha you don't have Netflix or whatever, you can still go back and listen to uh, the last couple of messages we've had here at the Heart. We've talked a little bit about the interactions that he has with with others, and then we're actually going to be finishing our series next week, talking about what's next after this Messiah person is gone. What's next after Jesus is no longer here to answer questions, to teach us things. And so today, what I want to do, though is dig into a little bit on how the way we think interacts with how we approach our faith. Because you have people from all over the political spectrum, all of you have introverts and extroverts and liberals and Democrats, and I didn't forget the libertarians, and everyone else all along those days, that all, or all along those different types of thinking that are Christians. Right? So if we have so many different ways of thinking about life, how do those different ways that you and I think interact with our faith? Now, for me, my perspective is the only perspective I have. I can try to see things from other people's point of view, and sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. But for myself, I know that my perspective, my, the way I think, has definitely impacted the way I approach my faith. And let me, tell you what, let me tell you what I mean. I grew up thinking, and I have to say, uh, anytime I say I grew up thinking and then that story leads to therapy, it's not an indictment on my parents or what they did or didn't do. Every one of you should be in therapy. I don't, know how, I don't care how great your childhood was or how terrible it was. Sometimes you just think things, and it's not because your parents made you think them, it's because you just think them and you're weird. But you're not weird, because we're all weird. Do you see what I mean? So I grew up thinking, and through years of therapy, have learned to express this, and I'm gonna tell it to you, is I fundamentally, deep down, and it's something I've been working on, I don't see myself as someone who is worthy of love just because. Okay? Now, I've gone through a lot of therapy for this. And so I do think I'm worthy of love if I do something for you, you see? If I do something for you, then I have gained or earned love in return. I have gained or earned. Now I can accept the, uh, the attention that, that uh, someone's going to give me. Now that, I can, uh, now that I think, okay, now someone can like me because I mowed their lawn for them. So if they say that they 
love me or if they say that they are a good friend, now it makes sense because I have given something in exchange for that. Can you see how this might have affected how I interacted with my faith? Is that a faithful concept? Is that a biblical concept? I don't know. I'm just telling you how I think. And that's what I really want to dig into today is how you think and how that affects how you approach your faith. Because many times in this, in the show, the show Messiah, people from all over the world, all different walks of life, all different faiths and cultures, the way they think is affecting how they interact with the Messiah, how they uh, interact with this man. It's affecting it. In fact, a couple of, or was it last month? Was Father's Day last month? June. Father's Day can sometimes be a difficult day for people. Why? Because they don't have great relationships with their father. And if you don't have, you grew up not having a great relationship with your father, and then people like me are on microphones every single Sunday telling you that God is a perfect father, Trust God the Father, you might have a difficult time interacting or approaching faith because when you think of Father, you might think of emotionally distant. You might think of wasn't really there when I needed him. So that could bring a difficulty in how you approach your faith. So what are we supposed to do when the way that we think, the way that we approach life in general What are we supposed to do when how we think affects how we approach our faith? We can't all approach faith the same exact way, and the reason I know that is because we don't all think the same way. So the way I kind of lived my life thinking like, uh, people, uh, I am worthy of love, I am worthy of value, I, I, I am valuable to people as long as I can do something for them. Can you imagine how that showed up in my faith. The way I would approach God is I would not bother him. (laughs) I would never bother God. I would always say God has bigger things to worry about than what Dom needs. God has other things going on and he's way, he's way busier than to take care of whatever Dom might need in today's, in whatever is happening today. I'm fine. I'll be fine. This is exactly how I approach my marriage, my friendships. I'm fine. I'm fine. Do you need, some, do you need something? God, can I do something for you? <laughs> I'm fine, though. I'm fine. Until I'm not fine, and then I'm on my knees, and I'm like, God, I, re- I know that I probably could have been asking for this for a while, but I really, really need this, and I really need you to come through. And if you don't, then I know that you don't care about me anymore. And that is on giving God an ultimatum. And so maybe you're not exactly like me, okay? Maybe you don't, you, don't need, you don't find your value by what you can or can't do for people. And like I said, I've come a long way in dealing with, you know, therapy and all that kind of stuff and, and uncovering that and really helping get past that. Seeing myself as valuable for who I am, not for what I can do for others. So maybe you're not like that. Maybe there's something else. There's a different way that you think. A different way that you approach life and how that has affected your faith. And maybe you're asking, why does it matter? Why would it matter if the way that I think changes the way I approach faith? That's not a big deal. That's not a bad thing. And I would say, you're right. It is not a bad thing. It is not a bad thing for how you think to affect how you approach our faith. Where where it becomes problematic where it can become an issue, is if the way that we think, we use that to approach our faith and nothing else. And we never question it, we never think about it, we never challenge it. That can be problematic for you, for your faith, for your interactions with God, and for your interactions with the people around you. I want to look at a particular verse today. I want to look at the book of Romans. Now, if you're not familiar with the Bible, Romans is actually a letter that was written by a man named Paul. Paul had this incredible interaction with Jesus. And because of this interaction, he changed the course of his life. 
He was someone who was seeking out and persecuting and sometimes killing Christians, people who were following this Jesus person, this, the, these followers of this new way. And he had this radical encounter with Jesus, changed his life completely, and he became one of the greatest, uh, one of the greatest apostles, the, the biggest uh, spreaders of the word, a super spreader. Used to be a good thing. <laughs> And he wrote several of what we call books in the Bible. He wrote several of those, Ephesians, Galatians, Colossians, Corinthians, Romans. He wrote these letters to groups of people. And so I want to read Romans 12, verse 2. It's a very small piece. And he's talking about how to approach your faith with your mind. How to approach your faith with your mind. Because it's one thing when we have a beautiful song that we're singing together, right? And we're singing about faith and, and God renewing our faith and talking about trusting God when the fight is there in the middle of the night, trusting God when not everything is great. And, and, and for me, it may be, it, tell me if you're like this. For me, when we're singing songs like that, I'm not thinking about a whole lot. I'm feeling that song. Right? I'm not overanalyzing. Well, I'm not always in a fight. Sometimes it's an argument. It's not going to fight, you know. Or... Sometimes the hardest times are not always at nighttime. So, you know, it's not literally at night when the fight comes calling, you know. You're not overanalyzing any of that. You're in the moment. You're feeling it. But what happens when we do our Monday morning selves where we're like, all right, now, okay, when is the fight supposed to come? Then we start thinking. So how... Do we approach our faith with our thoughts? Watch what Paul says in chapter 12, verse 2 of the book of Romans. Turned right to it. You just memorize things like this when you get to be where I am. <laughs> That's a joke. For the record, joke. Okay, watch this. He says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. I have to say real quick, keep this up here for a moment. Uh, don't let the word perfect scare you because perfect doesn't mean what you think it means. This is an old reference. Princess Bride, anybody ever... See, Prince Bride, I don't think that word means what you think it means. Perfect doesn't mean without error. It, right here. Perfect doesn't mean don't mess up. Perfect in God's eyes doesn't mean you never make a mistake. Perfect in God's eyes doesn't mean you're at church every single Sunday, which is good for a lot of us. For me. Perfect doesn't mean you never cuss, which is very good for me. What perfect means is whole and complete, a sense of completeness, satisfying and complete in God's eyes. And we become more and more perfect, more and more complete, the more and more we dig and grow our faith. So what does it mean to transform, to reform our mind? Let's look at it again here. Be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reform, reformation, reformation of how you think. So, it looks like the way you think, and I'm, I'm doing an interpretation here, okay? I am not a Bible scholar. I'm reading the same Bible you guys have in your phones and at home. Sometimes it's a different translation. This one in particular is the Passion Translation, but different translations have different wording in there. But it sounds like what we need to constantly do is transform the way we think, change the way we think. It says, inwardly, transformed by the Holy Spirit through total reformation of how you think. Another translation I was reading this week says, continually, continually transform, continually renewing your mind. So how are we supposed to do that? How are we supposed to change the way we think when we only have one way that we think? 
Well, the way we do that is we challenge ourselves. And you can challenge yourselves in many different ways. You can challenge yourselves by going to connect group, hearing other people's thoughts. You can challenge yourselves by watch, challenge, the, challenge the way you think by talking to different people who you don't always agree with. If you're married, you're living with someone you don't always agree with. That's a joke. I mean, it's, but you know what I mean. It's not a joke, but it wasn't a slam. Okay, we'll move on. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you change your mind? Because the more we transform the way that we think, the more we move towards growing our faith. Watch this. I, 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 wrote, the, I wrote this down because I don't want to forget it. When how you think doesn't line up, doesn't align, when how you think doesn't line up with how you approach faith, it is an invitation to explore both. If the way that you think about the world doesn't line up with how you're approaching your faith, that's not a bad thing. That is an invitation to figure out the gap, the difference, and explore that difference between those. When I have this certain way of thinking about the world that my only value for people is what I can do for them, well, that doesn't line up with how I'm approaching my faith. That doesn't line up with what I hear about God, so I need to explore the difference there. Because there's some people who hear that God loves you for who you are and for who you are right now, and they can accept that. And you have people like me who are like, yeah, but probably not, right? So I, it is on me to explore that difference between those two things. It's an invitation to explore both. It's almost like I want you to start looking for differences in the way that you think and how you approach faith. I want you to look for problems in the way that you think. Because when we see the difference, that's when we have a, an incredible opportunity to change the way we approach our faith or to change the way that we are thinking. And we have this invitation from Paul in Romans 12 too that says, continually transform inwardly transform. He says in there not to imitate culture, right? And I know there's been a lot of stuff. I've heard a lot of preachers use this particular verse to, you know, don't be like, but I, 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 think, it's, I think it's deeper than that. It's, it, it's not, it means don't copy the way other people think. Think for yourself. Don't just copy the way other people do things. Think for yourself. Because at some point, you're going to think similarly to somebody else. I am not the only person who owns white Vans shoes in the world. I wish I were, but I'm not. So there must be somebody out there that I think like them. Does it mean we're copying each other? No. But if I see, uh, I mean, if you're listening to this on a podcast, you won't see this, but if I see Eric's mustache, he's sitting in here right now, and I say, I am going to copy that, and then our good friend Dane is like, what do you mean? I've had this stash for a while. Why is it just now catching on? And it's, you know, we just saw Top Gun, and there's some things going on. <laughs> so if I get a mustache tomorrow, am I copying? Yes, Absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes copying is the only way. Sometimes copying can be a great way to change the way you think. But if we're copying just to imitate, then I think we're missing what Paul's saying. We don't need to copy. We don't need to imitate. We need to challenge the way we think, challenge to transform our mind. I wrote this down too. You limit your faith when you apply only your thinking to it. And you might be thinking your faith is your own, and it is. But if our faith isn't challenged by the people around us, and I'm not saying you need to go to some extreme other view than how you think, and maybe if you're ready for that and you want to be challenged like that, that's fine. I'm just saying having people around you that just look at life differently, having people around you that are more patient than you is a good thing to have. 
Maybe you're a super patient person and you need someone around you who's a lot more ambitious than you and takes bigger risks than you. It can be great to have that person around. Subtle, subtle, subtly different ways in how we think can help us grow our faith and we limit our faith when it's just our thinking. We stay in our own little bubble and somebody disagrees a little bit and we're like, nope, you can never be in my life again. Muted, muted. Last thing I want you to write down, if you're taking notes or if you want to, the small step of challenging our own thoughts are the big steps that we can take towards growing our faith. You know, I said that uh, earlier that I took these small steps of, uh, of going to counseling and going to therapy and, you know, and I've uncovered a lot in therapy. It wasn't just this whole thing of, you know, this small little thing of not feeling value to, you know, uh, or not feeling worthy of love. Just that small little thing is one of the things I uncovered. <laughs> but it rocked my world. It changed my life. And now I can say with confidence that I do feel worthy of love for just who I am. Ten years ago, you, you, you wouldn't have, I don't know if you could have paid me enough to say that and really mean it. And that small step of starting counseling or whatever it is, it doesn't need to be counseling. I'm not saying you should start counseling. Legally, I can't tell you you should start counseling. But I want you to. That small step of challenging the way that I thought about me has vastly affected the way I approach my faith. And now my faith is even deeper than it was. And my faith has changed along the way, but it's deeper than it was. Because now I know, now I can accept, now I can see that the people around me who have said they love me, I don't need to question that anymore. When I hear that God loves me, I don't need to question that anymore. It's a small step to take, so I wonder for you today in your life and, what's your, and what you have going on, what is the small step that you can take today that changes how you think? A lot of times we're afraid to change how we think. I mean, at least I am. I feel like, why would I want to change the way I think? I like the way I think. <laughs> I think I'm right a lot of the time. And I am. That's the problem, obviously. And that's not a joke. <laughs> and that's why I say I want you to find things to challenge in the way that you think. Because it's not a challenge if I say we got to change the way we think. And you're like, yeah, Dom, I agree with that. And then you just go on living your life the same way. What if today for you, accepting this challenge of changing the way you think means, I need to go find the problems with how I think. Or maybe it's not a problem. Maybe it's just a challenge of like, well, let me think about this a different way. And this isn't just with faith. With faith this shows up in all parts of our life. I semi-joked earlier that if you live with someone, you already have someone in your life that you disagree with. Corbin, our son, he's been home for the summer. He's about to move into his, his apartment at College Station. But for the summer, we have discovered many things that we disagree on. <laughs> Still, I've known him his whole life. And there's things that we disagree on. Amber, my wife and I, we've been married. We've been happily married for five years, but we've been married for 16 total. <laughs> I stole that joke. That's not mine. After 16 years, there are still many things that we disagree on. And so if you've been in any relationship for any amount of time, you know that agreeing is not the goal. How can it be? But we challenge each other. 
challenge each other not to agree with one another, but challenge each other to explore the relationship. And that's what I want us to do with our faith. Challenge the way you think to explore your faith. That's my challenge for you today. If you could, I want you to close your eyes real quick, bow your heads. I want to pray for us this morning. God, we're so grateful. We're grateful for what you have done. We're grateful for what Jesus has done. That the path has been made so easy for us. The path has been laid out for us. God, you have called us worthy. You have called us loved. You've given us grace, hope, forgiveness, and mercy. And I pray, I challenge us, I challenge myself, I pray that you would be with us along this journey of this challenge where we change the way we think. Challenge the way we think in order for us to grow our faith in a deeper way. We love you. We pray that in your name. Amen. Y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. To find out what is next for you in your journey of faith, I want to invite you to go to theheart.church slash next. See what's in store for you. Get in touch with us. We would love to be able to connect with you and see how we can partner with you in your journey. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you soon.